Hi, everyone, and welcome to Heal Endometriosis Naturally with Wendy K. Laidlaw. Wendy has spent the last two years helping women with various stages of endometriosis to heal naturally after putting her condition into remission. After her own healing success from stage four endometriosis and adenomyosis, she's inspired to heal others, and her goal is to help some of the 175 million women know that there is another way other than painkillers, drugs, or surgery. This is the place to be for real talk with real people for real results so you can learn how to heal your endometriosis naturally. Please note that the opinions expressed in this program may represent options but are not a substitute for proper medical care. Before starting any new healthcare program, we recommend you consult with a health professional. Hey everyone, it's Wendy K. Laidlaw here from Heal Endometriosis Naturally. I hope that this podcast and video finds you well today. I'm delighted as always to introduce my next guest. I love having all these brilliant guests on because it just gives you, the endometriosis woman and sufferer, an opportunity to see kind of what else is out there to help really start you on your journey. Wherever you are in your journey, the idea of all these interviews is just to expose you to all these amazing people who are doing great things and with their businesses that I think you can benefit from. So today I'm delighted to have with me Tally Lowe from, from Edinburgh, Scotland, from my hometown. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she has an amazing online business as well. So I thought it'd be great to chat to her. Hi, Tally. Hi, how are you doing, Wendy? I'm very well, thank you. So great to have you on. Yeah, my absolute pleasure. Thanks so much for inviting me to come onto your podcast. Yeah, well, I have to sort of let the listeners into a secret, obviously, that like you have been my yoga teacher for, for a wee while. And actually, <laughs> you were uh, teaching me yoga again just a couple of uh, days ago. And I have to say, it's amazing, you know, what, what yoga can do. But I wonder if you might just, as always, I always ask people to share their journey, kind of what led you to do what you do now. And then we can talk a wee bit more about, you know, how that can help women with endometriosis. Yeah, absolutely. So my journey has definitely been ongoing for a while now. Um, maybe in about, well, let's start from the beginning. I start, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder at the age of 19. Um, at that time, my self-care regime was a zero. I wasn't taking good care of myself. I was in a very weird, vulnerable place in my life. But once I had this diagnosis, it really opened my eyes to the fact that I probably wasn't taking that good care of myself, that maybe I need to set up my self-care game. But for a long time that I ignored that intuition, that gut feeling that, yeah, maybe there's something I could do for myself. So I did what a lot of people in the Western world do, which is take my medication, be a good girl, take it every day and just hope that the medical system would take care of everything. Yeah. And yes, it did in a lot of ways, but I really do feel that there was still something lacking in me. So my boyfriend actually was talking to me for years, probably before I eventually got my yoga mat saying, hey, you should try yoga. It, it would be really good for you. I think it would really help you with your anxiety or bipolar, like your self-worth. And I'd always sit there and say, Nah, (laughs) I would say yoga that sounds really slow and boring. I'd much rather go dancing or go on a treadmill if I want to work out. But yeah, over time, thank God, that constant nagging by my boyfriend about, yeah, I should try yoga. Just that gentle persuasion, let's say. Eventually, I gave in. And honestly, stepping on my yoga mat changed my life that first time. It changed my life as I knew it for the rest of my life, which has been fantastic. And it's been, yeah, it's been such a great journey in that respect. Wow. I mean, I mean, to be diagnosed with bipolar at 19, that's quite a diagnosis, isn't it? Um, mm-hmm. And, and almost like a, like a life sentence to some degree, a life sentence to that sort of medical machine and that, you know, and medicine for, forever. So, exactly. you know, so that that's amazing that you were kind of open to that i think because i think like yourself i'd always thought well to be fit or to be healthy you had to go to the gym or go for a run or do something hard and impactful on your body but my own journey with with yoga it was kind of one of the last last pieces but so tell us more about you know how when you say yoga transformed your life break that down for the listeners if they've never even 
contemplated yoga or the, like like you thought yourself like it's just gonna be boring and and like you know yeah. not like not at all um, positive on the body how break that down for people what, what does that what did that mean in your own emotional journey that very first time absolutely it's been so transformative because i think we spend so much time in our heads in our thoughts we feel so disconnected from our body a lot of us, especially if we're suffering from physical conditions, like I know a lot of your listeners will be, like endometriosis, you almost feel like your body is the enemy, like you can't trust it, like it's let you down. Yeah. And a lot of us really do experience this disconnect. So for me, yoga initially was all about getting myself away from my thoughts, creating the space away from my mental state and getting that reconnective, reconnection back to my body. Yeah. And that, yeah, that was definitely probably the biggest aspect of how much yoga has helped me. It's made me feel more connected to myself. Yeah. And as a result, yeah, sorry, carry on. <laughs> no, no, I, I was just going to say, I think you're absolutely right. And it's spot on. And it's what I've talked about in my own journey, living to constantly in my head and being totally disassociated, disconnected to the rest of my body, mm -hmm. to the point that my body, the whispers and the cries became screams and then went on strike. And and I, get, and, and I guess, as you say, especially women with endometriosis, their body's in so much pain, the, the concept of even connecting with your body just feels like a, like a ridiculous alien concept, doesn't it? Because you're like in so much pain. But it's amazing just that, that connection to the body. You then start to hear it, see it, feel it in a whole new way. Um, but most importantly, come out of, of the head, which just ends up sort of like going round and round in circles and creating a lot of anxiety. So how did you how did you find so talk us through kind of like what what were the what were the sort of steps in the progress with with you first going to the yoga mat? Definitely. So I guess at first I started to feel like I could trust my body, as I said before. Like I could trust the things that I could do on the mat, and I was like, hey, maybe I am a little bit stronger than I thought that I was. Yeah. And then as my yoga practice progressed, I was able to sit for longer in meditation. I was able to do some crazy funky arm balances and inversions, things that I never thought in my whole life that I'd be able to do. And I, yeah, I started to feel like not only was I stronger physically, but this also had a knock-on effect on how strong I felt mentally as well. Yeah. That was really helpful because again, when we lose trust in our mind or in our body, then yeah, you don't feel like you're able to do anything. Yeah. But even just the most simple of yoga postures, it just reconnects you, drops your attention down away from your thoughts and just really helps you to build up that sense of strength and inner, reconnecting to your intuition as well. So as you say, how it went from whispers to screams to being on strike, uh -huh. maybe if you had implemented yoga earlier on or some other kind of mindful practice, again, it's hard to say, hindsight's a beautiful thing. But maybe you'd have been able to listen to that voice of intuition a little bit sooner. Yeah, absolutely. And it's interesting you say that because I think there were so many aspects, things going on in my life at the time that I didn't want to see that mm -hmm. I just kept going on. And I think the stopping, listening, breathing, you know, would have meant that those aspects would have come to light you know, and I didn't know how to deal with those things then at that, that particular time. So it's very interesting. So explain what, what is yoga for those who've never done it, never heard about it, never even like looked at, uh, looked at a yoga mat. What is yoga? What is the essence of it? So yoga essentially, well, if you listen to yoga teachers, they say that yoga is a cessation of the fluctuations of your mind, which sounds a little bit technical. There's a few long words in there, but essentially it means quieting down your mind or detaching yourself a little bit away from your thoughts, creating that space. And yeah, that's a, quite a big term. Like how do we even go about doing that? And that's where the physical practice of yoga, the yoga poses we do on a yoga mat, really start to come into play. Yoga mm -hmm. essentially is very different from any other physical pursuit because it's all movement linked to the breath. So the breath is one of our most powerful tools to anchor us into the present moment. And obviously our breath is our constant companion. We breathe throughout the whole of our life. But when was the last time you could say you could really pay attention to your breath and just be with your breath? And for so many of us, yeah, you just lose that connection to your breath. It becomes shallow. It becomes erratic. It becomes quick. And it's not that long slow deep rhythmic breathing that our body needs to help soothe our parasympathetic nervous system 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think the power of the breath is so underestimated you know, and equal when people are in pain, their, their breathing tends to become shallow and, and, and you know, they aren't breathing enough. Um, and equally when you, uh, you can quiet the mind really easily by, by doing, focusing on your breath. But of course, if people are in pain or in fight flight or in stress or, you know, in that better, faster, more kind of mm -hmm. culture that we're in, oh, then yeah. you, you know, you're just living in your head and you're just like, you know, you don't even think about the fact you're not getting enough oxygen into your body to, to you know, to, to feed the cells and feed the organs that need to, to do all the work. Exactly. So, yeah, so it's, it's an interesting concept. I mean, I, I have to say, I think yoga for me was like one of the last pieces that I that I went to because um, I remember just before I ended up going in for my fifth and sixth operations, you know, for endometriosis before that my whole new journey began. I was like starting to train for a triathlon, you know, and I remember sort of, yeah, yeah, but I hadn't like, it was ridiculous. I hadn't even done anything for years. And there I was pounding my body on the pavement, you know, and going to the gym and doing things and being really almost, I look back, quite self-abusive to my body my brain had just made a decision and it was like right body you've just got to like you just got to suck it up and you've just yeah. got to get fit without any idea or respect or appreciation of you know the pain and inflammation at that time now obviously i've been so lucky to be able to put my endometriosis into remission and that's why i do these podcasts and do what i do now but yoga for me was a whole different type of um exercise and that i wouldn't even call it exercise as we traditionally know it in the yeah. West, it's more like you say, it's being in the present moment and it's, it's focusing on your breath and it's coming into your body in a way. And I may add, like we, we did a yoga session a couple of days and I can feel my muscles. I feel like I've been to the gym and been lifting weights and, and you just, I mean, obviously you had me in the most amazing positions. I never thought I would ever get in, in a million years, but it's amazing how, amazing it is for the body releasing toxins and just releasing tension and stress and and just how impactful it is and absolutely it's not that slow and boring form of movement that we all thought it was beforehand maybe that's just me but yeah, um, yeah it really does work your body it also de-stresses you as you say because you get that connection to your breath which we are so missing and um, yeah it just really helps us just to if we, yoga is more also than just physical postures on your mat, you can take the power of the practice, you can take what you've learned and bring it into your day-to-day -day life. And so many of my private clients have said that they're able to create a little bit of space and if they're having an argument with a loved one or a friend, they're able to say, oh, this is actually not going as I wanted it to. I don't feel good in this situation. I'm able to take a step back yeah. and realize that, yeah, Maybe this isn't serving me. And this is going to be applied in loads of different aspects of our life as well. If you're in pain, maybe it's like you said, recognizing the need to maybe not do that triathlon, maybe slow it down instead. Yeah. So it's just, yeah, learning to trust ourselves. I can't emphasize that enough. It's just such a big part of what yoga gives to us, I think. Well, I think that said when you were saying like developing your instincts, learning to trust your instincts. I think that that is the journey for the woman I work with is helping them learn to listen to their body in a new way. Because, you know, the pain is actually a way for the body to communicate that there's something wrong. And invariably what we're trying to do is run away from that pain because it just feels excruciating. But yoga is a great way to come into your body in a new way. And, and, um, and I think there's lots of different connotations and different ideas of what yoga is. And I'm sure there, there are people that, oh, you've got to have the perfect mat and the perfect pose and the perfect yoga pants. But actually, you can do it at home. You can do... Um, I had a situation just last week where a situation with my son and he was in another room talking to friends and I was actually out doing yoga poses because it was actually for me a way to come into the present moment because mm -hmm. I was getting a bit stressed. I was getting anxious and I knew that yeah, I had to keep level, <laughs> I had to keep control, but it was a way to empower myself in a really present mindful way. Um, so, so tell us about the breath, how, you know, from a science perspective, how does, how does the breathing and everything all work? What, what was the science behind the, the yoga and the breathing? Definitely. I would love to share that. I actually have a background in science. That's my previous career. And while it wasn't based on the breath, I still am so passionate about science research and particularly where it's starting to really come into the yoga community as well. We're actually starting to be able to recognize that these Asian practices are actually being good for us for, for many reasons, physically and mentally for that matter too. 
So the breath, um, yeah, so slowing down the breath for starters really helps to soothe our nervous system. It stimulates our parasympathetic nervous response, which essentially is our rest and digest, our slow down, our relaxed aspect of our nervous system. Yeah. So it gets us out of this fight or flight system instead our sympathetic system and starts yeah. to really slow us down and relax. I think that's one of the biggest benefits that yoga has to offer in terms of the breath. It just helps us to slow, to soften, to dial into this aspect of our nervous system that we, especially in modern day society, we really seem to neglect. Like you say, so go, 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 harder, faster, stronger. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that said, I think people underestimate how that the simplest form, the simplest act like breathing, just focusing on your breath actually helps you to be in the present moment because anxiety can kind of rise when we're, you know, panicked about the past and fretting about the future. And actually we really get to live in the now, uh, which again, I can completely relate to having had decades of pain with endometriosis. You're just like, I want to run away from this pain, but actually the breathing into the pain can actually help release endorphins can actually release you know good hormones into the body to actually help bring the as you say that nervous system down in a way that, that helps soothe it uh, what, what's been your kind of understanding or experience of that you know for people who are in pain now going i don't want to sit and breathe i'm in too much pain what, what would you be saying to them Oh, definitely. I absolutely understand that if you have anxiety or any kind of, if you have physical pain as well, yeah, the idea of just sitting and being with the pain can sometimes make you want to run a mile. Yeah. So if you are feeling like that, I would suggest rather than finding stillness, I'd find some really gentle movements. For example, cat cow breaths. And you can definitely look that up online. That, oh, I'm sure I've got YouTube videos that'll help you to show you how to do that as well. But um, just really gentle movements. But for, for, the, for those that are listening, so cat cow, that's like when you're, you've got your hands and knees on the floor. Is that mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, right. Your hands under your shoulders and your knees under your hips. And then you're in that sort of tabletop position. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And then you're kind of then bending your back uh, to come up and you're in head up. And that is the cow, isn't it? That's right, yeah. And then you're pushing, then you're coming back down, and then you're pushing like a curled up cat. Mm -hmm. yeah. So these exactly. are just very gentle kind of movements, but incredibly powerful. And even just breathing with those two movements can actually, you know, be very powerful, you know, to your present state of mind, to you physically getting oxygen in through the breath, and just helping you come back into your body away. Definitely. It just helps to just slow yourself down and take those breaths and Again, these really gentle movements will just really get you out of your head and into your body. Yeah. And it's such a powerful, powerful tool. And I think there's a big misconception, especially on like Instagram yoga, for example, that to be able to be a good yogi, you must be able to do a one-handed handstand or whatever. But that's not what yoga is about. No, no. And I think, that, I think it's great you saying that because there's lots of people that um, I, again, people get scared even to try something because they think, oh, I won't be perfect or I won't be that like one handed yogi on the edge of the mountain. Yeah. You know, I just, you know, and, you're, and, and I think I'm all about this. Why I'm having like so many people like yourself and people on who are, who are, are fantastic people and just taking these very, very basic, simple practices, uh, you know, back into the home, back into a kind of level. Oh, you've frozen. Level where people can just do a yoga class or, um, or, or doing something where, um, you know, they're feeling all this pressure and intense intensity on them. Um, mm -hmm. So it's wonderful that, you know, you are, are making it accessible for all people. That's something I so strongly believe in, definitely. Yoga should be accessible. It should be inclusive for everybody. And I really love working with my clients to help teach them to have a home yoga practice. I think that is so important. As you say, you don't have to go to the perfect studio or wear your Lululemon leggings or whatever else. You don't have to have the perfect yoga mat. You just have to just show up in whatever you're wearing, in whatever yoga mat you have, or just use your carpet if you need to. It's all good, but just start somewhere. And you yeah. really got to start to be able to feel the benefits. 
Absolutely. And, and I think even just doing one or even just doing the cat cow poses, even just doing the child pose, which is just being on the floor in your knees and then just stretching your arms out in front of you with your forehead on the carpet and just breathing in and breathing out. There's something magic. And it's interesting they call it the child's pose because you see lots of little children, you know, in those poses, you know, when they're talking. I remember my son used to fall asleep in that Aww. position. You know, so, but again, it's so grounding and it so just brings you to the present moment. And it might feel counterintuitive to people when they first start doing it as to kind of this feels a bit silly and this feels a bit odd. But, you, you know, it's like anything when you first start doing it, it might feel a bit odd and a bit, you know, a bit peculiar because you've not done it before. But, I, you know, that's why I wanted to bring you on to sort of you know, encourage people just try it on their carpet, try it on the rug, try just you know, in the morning or in after lunch or before they go to bed, even just five, 10 minutes, just, just, just try even these two positions, you know, just, just see what it's like. Just even just sitting on a chair to start with mm -hmm. and just wiggling your toes and feeling like aspects of your body as you're coming up, you know, through your knees and your thighs and your hips and your stomach and your chest, even just that gentle awareness into the body followed, you know, whilst you're breathing can be incredibly powerful. Definitely. Body scans are so, so powerful for sure. And yes, chair yoga is such a great idea. You don't have to be on the floor. You can be sitting comfortably. And again, doing those gentle cat cow breaths, so just lifting up through the chest as you're seated, as you breathe in, and then rounding through the spine, bringing your chin towards your chest as you breathe out. It doesn't have to be done in any other way. You can do cat cow breath seated, lying, well, not lying down. You can do it <laughs> on tables up. You can know you can do it anywhere. Yeah. And yeah, it's all about making yoga accessible. It really is. And yeah. just hour long sweaty vinyasa class. It can be, as you say, just five or 10 minutes of yeah. gentle humans. Well, I remember when I first started yoga, I felt very self-conscious. I think I'd been so ill for so long, being bedridden. And I, and I, I kind of felt, I read a couple of books about yoga as well, because I wanted to understand a bit more. So again, for those that are listening, if you're curious, if there's something in your instincts that are piqued by that, think, ooh, I'm quite curious, then read some books about it. And you watch, I mean, we'll, we'll get give people your information so they can watch your your videos and stuff but even just read about it educate about it and understand how powerful and impactful in a positive way it is to your body and how this is yoga has been around for what thousands of years oh yeah definitely <laughs> so it must be there must there must be something that it's doing that is right for for people to still have this practice or using these practices for for thousands of years Exactly. And the times may have changed, the society may have changed a lot, but we're still coming back to this practice. It, just, it works. It's magic. <laughs> and, and I think as well, more and more people, I mean, our bodies are designed to handle and manage stress, but only stress in small doses. Mm -hmm. But nowadays we are like constantly, I mean, I have my mobile phone on silent. I don't have it on ringer because how many beeps, noises, rings, demands are made of us all if you know if we no, there's just there's a there's a beat there <laughs> Sorry about that. you know, so, you know that, that's it there's so many demands on our our organism our us as 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 a as a living species that we actually almost need to put these uh, protective boundaries in place for it to allow us to come back into ourselves so that we can actually um handle and manage things more effectively when we do turn our ringer back on or when we do then go engage because actually to be constantly available all the time to people and to the world around us drains this body uh, immensely so yeah practices like the yoga and the breathing and, and and what's your experience of meditation i think again some people think that sounds a bit woo woo a bit out there what are your thoughts on on meditation as a practice mm -hmm. Yeah, and yoga is such as a movie meditation, and me that yoga is definitely my introduction to meditation. And yeah, meditation is such a hugely impactful way of slowing us down, reconnecting to our minds, to our bodies. Meditation has been scientifically proven over and over and over again that it is so helpful. So anybody who thinks it's a bit we would give it a go, <laughs> read some articles online, and yeah, you should just feel just really relaxed from meditating it can be quite challenging of course if you've got any anxiety if you're in a lot of pain then sitting still for a long period of time may feel really overwhelming yeah and again as i we said from yoga i say start off with just a couple of minutes a couple of breaths 
start off somewhere and do that body scan that we talked about, just bringing your attention from the soles of your feet all the way up to the crown of your head. Just simple body scans like that can have such a huge impact for way on how we live our lives and how we feel about ourselves. Absolutely. And I think, as you say, even just it's a starting small that's key. You've got to give yourself sort of the don't don't try and sit still for like even 15, 15 minutes or half an hour. If you think running around, you know, like like wood, woody woodpecker, you know, just like <laughs> zooming around and, and uh, you know, and then suddenly you're like, I've got to sit still. I remember the very first time I was I was encouraged to sit in the chair and for five minutes, be aware of my thoughts. I thought I was going to go insane. I was just like, oh, my God, I can't do that. And now I make it a daily practice. I, I go and lie down. I go and lie down for 30 minutes every day. My mind is so, still such that I need guided meditations or, you know, guided relaxations, whatever you want to call it, you know, yeah. just again, to allow me to come back down in, out of my head, into my body. And it's amazing how much guidance, insight, direction, you know, able to listen to my instincts in a different way. And I, and I kind of view it, I don't know about yourself, but I always say to the women I work with is, you know, we carry around our mobile phones and they, the battery depletes as you go through the day because of usage. Exactly. And we need to take our charges with her. We have to charge up our phone. I view meditation or yoga or breathing exercises as a way of charging up our bodies. Our body cells are like the, you know, the, the batteries in, in our cell phones. We need to charge them up. So exactly. even just stopping sitting, even sitting on a bench, taking and breathing in the leaf, not breathing in the leaf, but being mindful <laughs> whilst you're breathing all the leaves and the birds and, and just being in the present moment can be so impactful. And, and, and I'm delighted to hear you say about all these studies and case studies and, and countless studies of the effectiveness of, and really what meditation is and yoga is just being present in the moment, in the body and less in the mind. Exactly. And I think so many people think that meditation means that you have to silence the mind. It's not the case at all. And that can happen over maybe many years for most people of a continuous meditation practice. But meditation essentially is just being with your body and with your mind, noticing what's coming up. But try not to attach to your thoughts. So you kind of acknowledge them. Yeah. Say, oh, yes, there's a thought. But don't get swept up in the drama or get swept up in the labeling or the attachment to them. Yeah. Just acknowledge them and let them go. And if another thought comes a second or a minute or an hour later, that is okay too. Yeah. No, that's wonderful to hear you say that. I think that's it, isn't it? It's just being, uh, just noticing, which I think is just such a lovely phrase of say, of just noticing your thoughts and mm -hmm. trying not to, there's just no way in our fast paced society that, it's highly unlikely rather that anyone can get rid of our thoughts because there's just so much going through our brains but exactly. what we're trying to do is just notice it and almost become that observer of them so that we can actually um and i think you said at the very beginning you know recognize the power that we have within us not only to control our our, our thoughts in our mind but also to ha how that impacts on our body as well definitely absolutely and if you are it can work in both ways. If you're in a lot of pain, that's going to cause you mental discomfort, negative thoughts. It's just human. Of course you are. But yeah. vice versa, if you have a lot of mental tension, then that's going to manifest itself in your body as well. Yeah. So, so how have you, what, what is the biggest giveaway or the biggest takeaway that you've taken from yoga from your own life experience? Wow. I don't even know where to answer that question. I've got so many things coming up straight away. For me, I put it this way, my bipolar diagnosis, which is supposed to be an incurable, a lifelong condition, I've now been told I don't have it anymore. Oh, amazing. <laughs> which is supposed to be impossible. So yes, I, oh. and I take all of that, or I have to give yoga all of that credit. Yeah. And meditation and mindfulness and being present and self-care. Those are things that transform my life. That's awesome. I mean, you say you give yoga credit, but clearly that was a tool that helped you uh, get to where you needed to go to, to, to release yeah. all that stress exactly. and, and anguish and whatever was going on for you subconsciously that showed up mm -hmm. in that way for you. So that's amazing. I hope you feel like so proud of yourself for, do. for doing that. It's really empowering, isn't it? Something that you're told that's incurable and you're still able to let it go. 
Absolutely. Well, you're still, well, what, but for me, I mean, in my journey, again, endometriosis, oh, there's no cure, but actually the body's always trying to heal, whether it's emotional pain, abuse, trauma, whether it's physical pain, abuse, trauma, mm-hmm. whatever is happening to, to, to our body, our body's always wanting to rebalance. So it was, you know, exactly. always wanting to heal itself. And that's, yeah. that's the key. And it's, it's beautiful to hear your story because how many people are on countless medications for anxiety, for depression, for, for all different things. In fact, I've just been working with a lady who was on multiple um, drugs and things for all sorts of things. And, and she's off all of them now, you know, because she's been able to come back into her body in a safe way to hear, to process, to work through what was causing those. Because obviously these are symptoms mm. of what's going on deep down within the, in the body or the subconscious. That, Definitely. you know, there's a, there's a sense of overwhelm. So our body just switches off or our brain just hit, you know, can't, can't, um, can't deal with, with the information. It's an information overload, mm-hmm. um, like an electrical circuit that just this, the fuses just blow because you know, there's too much power or there's too much energy going through the wrong type of energy. But to mm-hmm. be able to use those kind of practices is, is lovely because they're so simple and so, so effective absolutely definitely so simple and so effective and they just bring you home back to yourself which yeah. is ultimately where we have been all along yeah and it. yeah life brings all these layers don't doesn't it layers of anxiety of pain of doubt of fear yeah and through these kind of mindful practices like yoga like meditation you're just able to unravel these layers and just come back to who you've been all along Absolutely. And it's interesting hearing you say that because I think um, people are searching and searching and searching, but what they're searching for lies within. And most, yeah. I, I know with my own journey, it was like I was searching, 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 and actually everything I was looking for was within me. I just didn't Absolutely. know it and I didn't know how to access it. And I think these tools, you know, these practices that you do, that I do now as well, are wonderful ways for us to come back into ourselves. Mm-hmm. because we get caught up in if people want to get more information about you and your practices and and i know that you do online um, sort of classes and things how can they get hold of you definitely i would love to just get the get my name out there and so my website is talisyoga.com t-a-l-i-s yoga.com i'm also on youtube you can find lots of my online classes there and i'm also working on creating a new pack a new program online which although I offer coaching online, this is what I'm hoping to be more of a kind of a community feeling for a, for a platform, for an online platform where people can access resources all about yoga, meditation, self-care, intuitive eating, the whole works. And I'm hoping it's going to be a one-stop shop for everybody just better access things that will really help them and change their lives for the better. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Oh, that's amazing. Cause absolutely. I think, um, I think when women start to, you know, start on this journey of trying to heal their bodies naturally from endometriosis, you know, it, it is a journey and it's a lifelong journey. It's not something that you can just do like a diet for a couple of weeks and, and uh, you know, then revert back to old ways because then the body's still going to show up in that old way of pain and suffering. But getting to the root causes and then using all these amazing different practices can really help strengthen the body. And it's amazing how many people, like when they get family involved as well, like the whole families, I've heard of families getting up in the morning and they all do yoga together, which is just like amazing. I'm trying to get my son and daughter to do that as well. But, um, <laughs> but thank you so much for, for being on. It's wonderful to, um, to, to chat to you and I hope that the listeners find this information really helpful and for those of you who are listening give yoga a try if yoga for you is just doing child's pose or just doing cat and cow and just you know go on to Tally's website or just go on to YouTube and and see what these be curious be mindful try and just imagine just you know it's it's a light it's it's fun and it's not something to take too seriously it doesn't matter if you're doing it right or wrong just just doing it and breathing into your amazing body which i know you may not feel is amazing right now but your body's amazing and the reason you're in pain is there's things there's inflammation something out of balance so so for those of you who haven't got my book then please do go to my uh, website heal and you can get a free paperback copy 
worth $14.99 on Amazon. And I just ask you to pay the shipping of seven. But I hope that um, you'll also check out Tally's website and things as well. But thank you so much, Tally, for chatting with me today. Thank you. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you so much. Okay, take care. Thanks very much. Bye bye. Thanks for listening to Heal Endometriosis Naturally with Wendy K. Laidlaw. And I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and rate us. If you're interested in learning more, you can download your top five jumpstart tips at healendometriosisnaturally.com and jump on the VIP email list. Remember to keep you number one. The world needs a healthy you.